Hello, in this video, we're going to uh, keep continue on with the four year series. This is video 10 in my mini series, and we're specifically we're going to examine the least squares and Bessel's inequality. And if, if you see this wide out, I had more planned, but then it then it became too long, so I widened it out. It'll it'll get pushed back to the next video. But here we're going to look at uh, orthonormal set of functions. So we're going to call them phi one, phi two, you know, phi n, you know, forever. And these are going to be the Fourier coefficients for some integrable function f with respect to this inner product. And this is exactly analogous to what we've developed in some of the earlier videos. And we're going to let Sn be this partial sum of our uh, estimates. So it's a linear combination of our orthonormal functions. And we want to show the, the, uh, the following five properties. And um, yeah, so we'll just jump in. So now these CIs are constants. So they're, they're constant values in front of our basis function. So, um, so we're, it's a linear combination of functions to estimate a function that's within that same domain. And so let's show the following constraints. That for any set of constants, we're going to define Tn to be this linear combination. Now the CIs are specifically chosen, you know, based on the or orthonormal or orthogonal property of the Fourier constants that they're drive like this. So these Ds are any other set. And we're going to show that the inner product of itself is can be written as this sum. So the inner product of Tn x, which is this by itself integrated from negative pi to pi which is how we're defining our inner product is this and then next we are going to show that the, the this is an inner product of these two functions but the way inner products that's equivalent to square distance so in in this inner product we're looking at the square distance between these two functions and if Sn approximates F closely, we're hoping that this, this square distance is small. But that's, that's really dealing with more part C. <laughs> but we're going to show that this inner product, the square distance, is, is this formula. And then here, which I just find so fascinating, is saying that the, now remember the SNs are the ones where they use the Fourier coefficients and the TNs are any other set of constants. The inner product using the Fourier coefficients is always smaller than this. So the squared distance between these two functions is smaller than the squared distance between these two functions, which that seems like a good property, and it is. And they're only equivalent when the constants are the same. Now here, we want to show, let, we're going to let it be an, an infinite linear combination of our basis functions. Um, and it's going to be the Fourier series for F. So the CIs are derived, you know, using the orthogonality property. We're going to show that this relationship always holds. And then the CIs, remember, that's for when our basis uh, functions are orthonormal. So that means when you multiply them together, they're uh, zero, and when they multiply by themselves, they're one. Now, up to now, we've mainly looked at an orthogonal basis. And so we're going to derive a property that that's similar to this, where we use the orthonormal basis to where we use the orthogonal basis. So this relationship holds. And really, these are these are equivalent, but we're going to show that they're equivalent, where the A and B ends are defined by you know, our original uh, Fourier series. So let's jump right in. Now, proof A, we're going to remember we're looking at uh, Tn, which is any, uh, it's a linear combination of our orthonormal vectors, but using some arbitrary constants d. And because these phi i's are orthonormal, when we 
look at the inner product, it's zero when the I and J are different and one when they're the same. So now if we look at the inner product of TN of X and TN of X, we get this and there it's a sum. So this sum can be combined here and since uh, integral is a linear operator, we can take it in until we, you know, there's only X's left. So we can put it right here. And that's what we do here. But notice that this, based upon the properties of orthonormal, is either zero or one. And when I and J are different, this is zero, so the sum, it doesn't contribute to the sum. And if it's one, well, then you get back what you multiply. And so the I and J have to be equal. And if that's the case, they're the I squared, and that's what we get here. Now let's examine the squared distance between these two functions, f of x and, and uh, sn of x. Remember, we're using this function to approximate this function. We're going to use the inner product to show that the squared distance between them, where well, we're going to drive a formula for that. Ultimately, we'd love it if that was zero, but um, we're stopping at some n, not going to infinity. So the inner product is, you know, you stick in this here and here and you integrate over the range. Well, you, you multiply this out or FOIL it or however you like to say it. So f of x squared, and then you get 2 times this, and then s of n and s of n times each other. Remember, this is the sum. It's a linear combination. So the, the product ends up being this. Now, integral is a linear operator, so we're going to take, you know, this, that, and do, you know, do look at three of them. And so this just comes down, and when you bring the integral sign in here, you've got to stop when you only have x's left. And that's what we do here. And the same way here, the integral comes to there, so we get this. But based on part A, this is ci squared. Right, so we just said for any set of constants that if you're in a product with itself, you get the sum of those constants. So this is ci squared. This comes down, and this integral sign here is how we defined ci in our origin in on page one. That, that's by definition. So this is ci times ci, which is ci squared. Well, you have one of these and minus two of those, so then you get negative one of those. And so this is the formula we wanted to derive, so we're finished. So now let's look at uh, part C, where we wanted to show the least squares estimate, or the, the four-year coefficients are the least squares estimates, or you know they're the closest in regards to the inner product we picked. So we want to show this relationship which is saying that the squared distance is minimized by the Fourier coefficients. So, so this is what we want to show. And we're going to look at this piece first, which is this inner product here. Now, by definition, it's this times this integrated over from pi to, to negative pi. And... Um, you can FOIL this and we get this. And then you could take the integral sign into each of those. Now by part A, the inner product of itself is just the sum of the coefficients. And Tn was the linear combination of, you know, sort of arbitrary constants di. And then this comes down. And this piece right here is how we define Ci. So we get di times ci. And in, in this step, the next step, we're going to add 0. We're going to add this and subtract it so it doesn't change it. But this piece here, um, we can combine into this. So you know we just treat it over one sum. We have ci squared minus di ci plus di squared, which is what this is. And um, but this piece right here, based on B, we said was the inner product of F and S of N. We're using the, the uh, Fourier coefficients. And this is, it comes down. But this is the sum of, of squares. So this is always positive. So if we, if we 
remove this, we're making the equation get a little smaller. And that's what we do. So let's get rid of this. So that says the inner product of the uh, using the Fourier coefficients is always smaller than any other set of arbitrary constants. And now if CI and DI were the same for every linear combination, then, then they're equal. So you get equality when the constants are the same. This is for all I. Um, and, and to me, that's pretty fascinating that the Fourier series is, is the least squares estimates. Now, Bessel's uh, inequality is this, and it has to do with the inner product times itself. Okay, So an inner product, and that's what this is, so this is the, the squared distance of F and SN, and squared distance is always positive, so we get this equation, but by part B, the inner product of itself was this, and so you have this, which is greater than zero. So if we if we add the cn squareds to both sides, we get this relationship. This is less than that. Now let's let n go to infinity on both sides. But this there's no n, so it stays the same. But there's an n here, and so we get this. And this is Bessel, Bessel's inequality. And, and that's what we wanted to show. Now the last page is, um, we wanted to sh essentially show Bessel's inequality for the original four-year series that we used, where we used an orthogonal basis as opposed to an orthonormal basis. And so we want to find the relationship between the CIs and the ANs and, B and BNs in our original. So if we look at this, so. Here, here was our original orthogonal basis, and the, and the inner product of any two of these is zero. But the inner product of itself was, was not one, so it's not orthonormal, but it is orthogonal. And to make it uh, orthonormal, you have to multiply it or divide it you know, by a constant. So when you take the inner product of itself, you get one. And so this is an orthonormal basis. And both of these are with the with respect to this inner product. And matter of fact, when everyone says I have an orthonormal or orthogonal or anything like that, you need to ask with respect to what inner product, because that that's always the key. Um, so now we're going to develop a, a four-year series for the orthogonal basis and the orthonormal. And so let's do that. So. Um, so C0 and A0, so it's really with respect to this first one. Oh, remember these are C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, and on. And this is A0, A1, B1, A2, B2. You know, so they, you know, in our series we kept all the signs separate and the coefficients in front of them were the B ends. Co cosines were the A ends, and then we had this as the A0. But all these are C's, C0, C1, C2, C3, C4. Um, and so let's look at those. So, so C0, uh, we get this. So when we look at the, you know, orthogonality property, you know, use that, look at it back at that video, we get C0 is this. And A0 was this. And that, you know, that's the way we define it. And then... For the ANs, they were all defined like this. And then if we look at the um, odd Cs, they're defined like this. And that's where we're trying to pick off one, three, five, you know, so we can have the same cosine. And then the even ones, um, the BNs were defined like this, and the C, the even Cs were defined like this, you know, using the orthogonality property. So, if we were to equate these two, you know, they look very similar, right? A little bit different. Well, the C0 is actually square root of pi over 2 AN, so you can solve, back solve for the C0, which is this. And uh, for the CN 
squared, so the even ones, I don't know why I didn't switch those. Um, these look very similar, right? And so you can kind of back solve for the CN, you know, C2N, which is this. And then for the odd ones, those look very similar, right? So you can back solve and you get this. Well, if we look at the CN squareds, then C0 squared oh, is, is going to be, you know, pi over 2A0 squared, right? If we look at C1 squared, um, so that would fall into this one, which is this, it's going to be um, pi times A1, so pi times A1. And the same way for the Bs. So if we, it's C2, you know, 2 squared, we're going to get pi Bn squared, which is what this relationship says. So you can show this is equal to this. Well, if we look at all these squared, that's what this is. So that's, you know, and then there's a pi constant. So if we can take it and divide it to the other side, that's what this is. So this is equal to this. But then by part D, Bessel's inequality, this is less than or now remember the one over pi stays the same, is less than or equal to this. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.